Some love them, some think they're a soulless cash grab stain on the industry. Remakes are a controversial topic in the gaming community, so let's run down a few pros and cons to video game remakes. Remakes hamper originality. The most common negative I hear when it comes to remakes is that remakes aren't new. They're taking an old concept that already exists and just redoing it. There's nothing impressive or interesting about reusing old material. People are getting tired of seeing the same old things over and over again instead of something new. Staying stuck in the past prevents us from moving forward. Remakes allow for original twists on old ideas. While remakes are inherently unoriginal, it doesn't mean they can't add in their own twists to give you something new. The Resident Evil 1 remake adds crimson heads to the game. If you kill a zombie without blowing off its head or burning its corpse, it can come back to life later on as a much faster, stronger, and scarier crimson head. Blowing off a zombie's head is not super reliable in RE1 Remake, so that means your main way of stopping Crimson Heads is to burn the zombie's corpse. Fuel for your lighter being a limited resource then adds another element of strategy and fear to this already tense game. Kirby Superstar Ultra adds in a ton of in-game bonus content that wasn't in the original Kirby Superstar, like a brand new mode where you can play through the game as Meta Knight, a remixed challenge version of the Spring Breeze campaign, and far more difficult super bosses. Remakes make the original game less accessible. If a company already has a remake available on modern platforms, they may not even bother putting the older version up for download. You can't play the original 2D version of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance. The only version of the game that's readily available for online purchase is the 3D remake that's included in the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 collection. Persona 3 Portable got a remaster for modern platforms, but you still can't play the original Persona 3 or the FES update, which is very different from the portable version having tons of unique content unless you have a PS3 or you want to fish for an old PS2 copy. One thing I've even seen a few companies do is remove the older versions of a game once a remake or remaster comes out. We saw this with the Sonic Origins collection when Sega removed the classic Sonic games from digital storefronts, and also when Rockstar removed the older versions of the GTA games from many different online platforms to make way for their definitive trilogy. Some of these remakes have bugs and other problems, but even if these updated versions were the superior versions of the game, you shouldn't take down the original because there's still plenty of people who would love to experience these games in their purest form. Remakes make games more accessible. Remakes can take an old game that had some issues and fix those problems to make the game more easy to get into. In the original Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 2 USA, if you get a game over, you're going right back to the beginning of the game. That's just way too unforgiving. There's nothing more demoralizing than losing progress in a video game, so losing all of your progress is just soul crushing. Luckily, this was removed in the remakes of the games in the Super Mario All-Stars collection. One thing that I think that a lot of gamers take for granted is the amount of accessibility options that games have nowadays. There are people with disabilities like colorblindness that can make some things difficult to see in games. There are people with poor hearing. There are some people with arthritis or other issues that can make finger movements difficult. This is something that not a lot of gamers think about because a lot of hardcore gamers are able-bodied young people. But there are a ton of people out there who have difficulty playing older games because back then game developers were not as knowledgeable or as aware or as thoughtful of the physical complications that some people have. In recent years, games like the Dead Space Remake have added so many accessibility options to help everyone from those with vision issues, hearing issues, precision issues, and content sensitivity issues. There could be someone out there who really wants to play an old classic game, but they literally physically can't. So remakes can be a great way to allow more people to enjoy games. Remakes prevent new games from being made. Game development can take years nowadays, so if a team decides to work on a remake, they obviously have to spend a lot of time and resources on it. That time and those resources could have been used on something else, something wholly original. The opportunity cost of making a remake is not being able to dedicate manpower to new games. Imagine if instead of remaking Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, we got a new Pokemon spinoff, something really unique like Pokemon Conquest or the trading card game RPGs. 
every remake is a lost opportunity for something fresh. Remakes allow new games to be made. While yes, resources are used up in making remakes, those remakes can help new games get made. Christian Whitehead, a prominent figure in the Sonic fan community, got in contact with Sega and he developed a remake of Sonic CD that was released in 2011. He formed a relationship with Sega, working on remakes of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, until eventually he became the lead developer of a brand new 2D Sonic game, Sonic Mania, in 2017 which to this day is considered to be one of the best games in the series. Remakes are a safe way for a company to make some quick cash and gauge interest for games in that particular style. We didn't get another classic Mega Man game until after the Legacy Collections dropped. Remakes aren't necessary. If a game is already great, what's the point of even making a remake? Remakes make sense if the original game was inherently flawed or has some issues that a remake could iron out, but if you look at the games that are being remade, they're all critically acclaimed darlings. Resident Evil 4 is considered to be one of the most influential games of all time, Dead Space is a survival horror legend, Metal Gear Solid 3 is considered to be the best game in the series, The Last of Us was a fantastic send-off for the PS3, and Final Fantasy VII is one of the most beloved RPGs of all time. Remakes are just a cheap way to double dip on something that players have already bought. Remakes don't have to be necessary. Of course, remakes aren't necessary, but it doesn't make them any less cool. Remakes can be a way of making something people already think is good and make it even better. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green add many of the gameplay improvements from the later Pokemon games like abilities, the special stat split, and the new types to the Generation 1 games. Super Mario 64 DS adds brand new playable characters with unique abilities to Mario 64. The Link's Awakening remake adds a dungeon level editor to the game. Were these features needed? No but there's still really cool features that deepen the experience of the original games. Remakes hurt the legacy of the original game. The existence of remakes can make the originals less remembered. When a kid looks up Crash Team Racing, the first result isn't the 1999 original, it's the 2019 remake. If I look up Resident Evil 3, I have to scroll down to the fifth result to get the original game. In cases where the original is considered to be better, having the remake be the face of the game's identity is an insult. People aren't gonna go digging to find the originals, meaning the remake will forever be how a game is known by the general public. Whenever I talk about Shadow of the Colossus, I have to make sure I add on the end there that I'm talking about the 2005 original and not the 2018 remake. Remakes further the legacy of the original game. Remakes bring attention back to the original game. Tons of people go back to play the original game once a remake is announced. There'll be comparison videos showing all of the nitpicky reasons why the outdated game from two decades ago has more personality than the new version. When's the last time you actually heard someone talk about Advance Wars before the remakes were announced? When's the last time you heard someone talk about Pac-Man World before the remake was announced? When's the last time you heard someone talk about Spyro before the Reignited Trilogy was announced. You can't deny that remakes get people talking. Alright, so we've been through some pros and some cons. I guess it's that point in the video where I have to make my stance known. Personally, I don't think remakes are a bad thing. I think they give new people a chance to experience old games. They can add improvements from later games in the franchise to make the older game better, and they keep the memory of the classics from dying. Obviously, I love getting new, unique, and interesting games, but hey, every once in a while, I don't mind seeing a Persona 3 remake. What can I say? Like a lot of things in life, remakes are fine if done in moderation. If it gets to the point where every other big release of the year is a remake, then, you know, maybe things might have to calm down a little bit, but as things are right now, I think we're okay.